Today we're talking about an incredibly powerful person in the Marvel Comics universe tied to the X-Men, tied to Cyclops, tied to the demon hordes of Limbo, Mr. Sinister, Hellfire, Arcane Magic, and Halloween. Today is all about the Goblin Queen, Madeline Pryor. Madeline Pryor's story starts in 1983 with Uncanny X-Men issue 168. However, we can go back a couple years and start with a funny story. X-Men writer Chris Claremont wrote a character into Avengers Annual 10, Rogue's first appearance, named Maddie Pryor. These characters are not connected, although he did make a connection between them, but as more of an inside joke. More on that in a moment. Chris named Maddie and Madeline Pryor after Madeline Edith Pryor, a folk rock singer from Blackpool, England. In 1980, in the pages of Uncanny X-Men issue 137, Jean Grey of the X-Men, now the Dark Phoenix, seemingly died. And she would remain off the table for a few years and at the bottom of Jamaica Bay. And it was in this void where Madeline Pryor's tale truly begins. A vile geneticist named Mr. Sinister had been keeping Scott Summers under observation for his entire life, even while a young Summers was living in an orphanage. Sinister wanted to manipulate Scott and use his DNA for his own purposes. At some point, he also acquired the DNA of Scott's love, Jean Grey. Scott Summers, with Jean off the table, was now a lover without a love, even though he just linked up with Lee Forrester for a while. Just after leaving Lee for Anchorage, Alaska, Scott happened to meet a lady named Madeline, who looked a lot, and when I say a lot, I mean exactly like Jean Grey. At least she was supposed to. Perhaps this was the beginning of demonic influence over her and the rest of the team, or maybe psychic manipulations and foreshadowing of the insidious villains to come. She was supposed to look like Jean. Chris Claremont says that they went through a lot of trouble to say that this was not a clone of Jean's, but that they looked a lot alike, playing on the theory that everyone on Earth has a double somewhere else. Those are the early days before her story had been fleshed out fully, and truthfully, even before Mr. Sinister himself had debuted. When this idea was retconned, spurned on by writers circumventing Jim Shooter's edict that her crimes were too high to have any sort of absolution or redemption, her simple backstory was changed. Where once she was not a clone of genes, she became one. It was Mr. Sinister who used that stolen DNA who had created a clone of genes, though this wouldn't be revealed until six years after her debut in issue 160. At one point, a fragment of the Phoenix Force that had been rejected by the cocooned Jean Grey entered Maddie's lifeless husk and gave her life and power, while it also made a duplicate for itself, and this was reckoned as having been what had actually caused the cosmic genocide while the real Jean was trapped in a cocoon. Mr. Sinister named his clone Madeline Pryor, with the last name of Pryor being a reference to her having had a prior life as Jean. Nathaniel Essex, aka Mr. Sinister, sent his creation to Alaska and got her a job running freight cargo for the North Star Airways Company, which just so happened to be a company run by Scott Summers' grandparents. It was here that Scott met Maddie for the first time. Madeline told Scott a story about how she used to be a commercial pilot flying 747 airliners, and one time she was on a long-haul trip into San Francisco when her plane was hit by a freak storm, and as they were touching down, a wing collapsed and they crashed. The plane exploded, and with fire all around, all souls on board died, except for herself. She was now looking for meaning to prove that she was still alive, and the date of that tragic incident was September 1st, 1980, the same day that Jean Grey died. This story, though, was planted in her mind to explain the fire and fury she felt when her lifeless husk was infused with the Phoenix Force, giving her a cataclysmic rebirth. Scott took Maddie back to see the X-Men for Wolverine and Mariko's wedding, and when she got there, Empress Lalandra of the Shi'ar Empire, Professor Xavier's love, had a visceral reaction at the sight of her, but Colossus held her back. Scott then took her up to the Starjammer vessel, which is when she met Corsair and Hepzibah of the Starjammers, along with the other members like the newest one, Carol Danvers, aka Binary. Around this time, Jason Wingard, mastermind, was influencing the X-Men's minds, even making them believe that the Phoenix had returned, and it was he who got the X-Men thinking that Maddie might be a clone of Jean's, but they quickly got wind of his scheme and ended that plot. Scott, ignoring the red flags though, rather quickly married Madeline Pryor. Maddie flew them to the South Pacific for their honeymoon, and they hit a storm and she had to do an emergency water landing, then fended off sharks and giant octopuses, but they eventually made it to their hotel in Tahiti, and that's where she hung out while Scott was blipped away for the 1985 Secret Wars event. A short while later, Madeline was using her pilot skills to fly a survey team over the Arctic Circle, and that's when they were hit by a storm and they crashed. 
The team, Scott included, found a fire fountain that bestowed superhuman powers and Maddie gained the powers to heal both mental and physical injuries and so she changed her name to Anodyne. It turns out that that fire fountain was the doing of the trickster god Loki and it didn't last long. Scott then got Maddie pregnant and by issue 201, just after Madeline gave birth to a baby, Scott left her to focus on leading the X-Men team once again and she was angry about this and set her down a dark path. That baby, by the way, would grow up to be the mutant Nathan Summers, Cable. As 1985's X-Factor series began, the cracks in their marriage were forming. Scott's commitment to the teams continued to take precedence over their family, and Maddie was distraught, and to make this all worse, by this time, Jean Grey had formally returned. When Sinister learned that Jean Grey was alive, he needed to cover his tracks and destroy the evidence. In other words, he needed Madeline Pryor to die. So he bought North Star Airways and hired Maddie as a pilot, while also sending a kill team in the form of the Marauders after her and to capture future Cable. The Marauders shot Pryor, but she survived and woke up in a hospital as Jane Doe. She was starting to have nothing left, no proof of her existence. Even the marauders who stole their baby left her with nothing, so she almost jumped off a cliff to end it all. But Alex Summers, Havoc, saw her and rescued her from that fate. And that was the start of something new with another of the Summers brothers. Maddie called the X-Men who got to the hospital in time to save her from the marauders, and that's when they went to Dallas, Texas, and encountered a demonic, shamanic villain named The Adversary, right at the start of the Fall of the Mutants story arc. After Scott saw the X-Men seemingly dying in a battle with The Adversary, he thought them all lost, but unbeknownst to him, they'd been resurrected by Roma, a goddess that is also the arbiter of reality and a guardian of the Omniverse. Maddie and the X-Men then moved to Australia, and there she continued to develop a hatred towards Scott for leaving her. She took control of the X-Men's computers and in doing so also blocked news about Cyclops and X-Factor while also being influenced by demons like Sim and Nastir. The demons played on her insecurities while also tempting her with power, eventually awakening the dark power within her. It was during this time that she also seduced Scott's brother Alex Summers. She was then taken as a prisoner of Genosha, an island nation famous for enslaving mutants, and it was here that her powers grew, as did her anger, her vengefulness, her psychoses, and her power. They ran tests on her to prove her powers, and she ended up killing an entire building full of scientists and Genosian magistrates. In Uncanny X-Men issue 238, Madeline manifested a child variant of herself that looked like British singer Maddie Pryor. The child even quoted Gone to America, a song from Maddie's band, Steel Ice Band. By the time we get to Uncanny X-Men issue 240, Madeline transformed into the Goblin Queen. Neither Mr. Sinister nor the demons could control the Goblin Queen. And this was right around the time of Inferno, a demonic invasion of Manhattan. During this invasion, Goblin Queen abducted her lost son and took him to the top of the Empire State Building, and she even used her seduction of Alex Summers to turn him into her own Goblin Prince. She wanted to sacrifice her baby to permanently open the doorway between Earth and their Limbo Realm, home of the Demon Hordes. It was Marvel Girl, aka Jean Grey, who took on the Goblin Queen, so Goblin Queen turned Jean's demonically influenced parents against her. She also told Scott, in a long-time reunion of sorts, that killing baby Nathan would be for vengeance and destruction. In the end, Maddie released a massive amount of energy and power to destroy the X-Men, and she died, though the X-Men and X-Factor teams managed to shield themselves and survive Maddie's last destructive strike. It turns out, though, that Pryor was not fully gone. The Phoenix Force returned to Jean along with some of Maddie's memories, and her personality continued to live on inside Jean Grey for years to come, dormant, waiting for her time to re-emerge and attack once more. But when Jean Grey was fighting Erishem the Celestial, she unleashed a massive energy blast which erased Pryor's consciousness from her own. Though it didn't quite erase it, it just expelled it from her own mind. In 1995, Nate Grey, aka X-Man, fell to Earth, where he was discovered by Madeline Pryor. X-Man is another being, an Omega-level mutant who was also genetically manipulated by Mr. Sinister, only he came from the Age of Apocalypse timeline. She seduced Nate Grey, which is kind of weird because Nate's another version of Nathan Cable, her own son. Queen Madeline ruled the world from high up in her floating city and she ended up setting herself on fire intent on proving she'd come back to life and when she died Earth 998 descended into war. She seemingly came back to life but this was an imposter. This was the Red Queen, an evil Jean Grey from Reality 9575 who stole Maddie's identity and served as a false queen in her stead. In 1998, Alex Summers aka Mutant X died but ended up in an alternate reality on a team called The Six where he encountered this reality as Madeline Pryor. Here she is Marvel Woman was working with Bloodstorm, a vampiric version of Storm, an ice man made of ice, a beast called the Brute. 
and a demon variant of Angel called the Fallen. Marvel Woman here even got a Phoenix Force-like primordial power called the Goblin Force. In 2003, Marvel included Pryor in the Marvel Mongaverse with the X-Men Phoenix miniseries, and this story found her pairing up with her sister to try to recover the stolen Sword of Limbo. In 2006, Madeline showed up in the X-Men The End, where she was disguised as the mutant Dust before revealing herself and merging with Jean Grey. This was a future story in an alternate reality though. So eventually, Earth-616 Madeline did return. After Jean Grey purged Maddie from her mind, Pryor lived on as a psychic ghost and had now acquired more magical powers in the process. She was now the dominatrix -y Red Queen, an immensely powerful ghost. The Red Queen formed the villainous Sisterhood of Evil Mutants along with a Hellfire cult, recruiting ladies like Chimera, Spiral, Martinique, and Lady Deathstrike, along with Reagan Wingard, daughter of Jason Wingard, aka Mastermind, so she became Lady Mastermind. She also seduced and tortured the mutant Empath and used his emotional-based powers to recruit more youngsters for her Hellfire cult. The cult ended up reanimating Psylocke from Quanon to her original body, a test run of of sorts for what was to come. They ended up keeping Psylocke as a mind-controlled slave to help in their battles, taking her into combat when they attacked the X-Men right in their own headquarters. And when they attacked, Maddie had Psylocke and Lady Deathstrike attack Wolverine and she used that distraction to steal a piece of Jean's hair that Wolverine had kept. She took it to New York and to Jean's grave intending to resurrect her and inhabit her body. Dazzler fought with Psylocke, blasting off a part of her face before Betsy took a psychic knife to her own brain, ending herself to get back to her quantum body. The X-Men tricked Maddie though. Domino had taken off with Jean's body and this replacement was not enough to contain Madeline Pryor and it disintegrated. In 2012, finally, years after she was off the board, Madeline Pryor was resurrected by Mr. Sinister, but he didn't make just one. He made a handful of clones. Mr. Sinister wanted to capture the returned Phoenix Force that was using Psylocke, Cyclops, Emma Frost, Colossus, Magic, and Namor as hosts. They became his high court and stayed with him while he sent the Sinister Battalions out to war. The X-Men attacked and Cyclops saw Madeline, three of them, and ended up blasting them with his optic blasts. The Phoenix Force showed up to stop Mr. Sinister just as he was trying to channel the power to his priors. It was in 2014 when Archaea made a new sisterhood with Amora the Enchantress, Typhoid Mary, and Selene, the Black Queen, that Madeline Pryor was fully resurrected after the Anna Cortez version of Lady Deathstrike took her own life. Enchantress put Maddie's soul into Anna's lifeless body to bring her back. During 2015's Secret Wars, Pryor was a Baroness until she was unseated and contained by Baron Summers. She would meet with God Emperor Doom, Mr. Sinister Apocalypse, and Maestro to plan on quelling an uprising by the Prophets. She terrorized the Inferno Domain of Battleworld with Alex Summers by her side as her prince and concubine, fighting against a magic, aka a dark child and her demon hordes. Domino, Boom Boom, and Colossus even joined Madeline against Peter's own sister, wielding her soul sword in the conflict. At the end, Madeline bathed in the hellfire escaping from Magic's body and she became the new dark child, the new Goblin Queen, ruler of Limbo. The Goblin Queen reappeared after Secret Wars and all new X-Men. She emerged from a portal at a storage facility in Newport Ritchie, Florida, following a battle with X-23, her demons, and a Black Vortex modified Archangel. She sent her demons to attack Miami, Florida, where some of the young X-Men were having some fun in the clubs. This is when she had a demonic Kurt Wagner with her, now called Bamfy the Dragon. She had no real plan here, just mojitos and mayhem as she put it. Goblin Queen had a fight with Idie, a mutant from Nigeria whose powers emerged after M-Day. And she almost beat her and the other X-Men until an occult-empowered beast showed up to blast her and her demons back through a portal right back to Limbo. In 2017's X-Men Gold, Mojo was running an Inferno simulation on Mojo World and putting X-Men Team 3 through the ringer. This was Jean Grey, Beast, Colossus, Jimmy Hudson, and Nightcrawler. And they ran right into the Goblin Queen and her demons. This is when Maddie and Jean fought each other again and it was Jean who knocked her out cold. That same year in X-Men Blue, Goblin Queen debuted her Hexmen team, which was her, Colossus, Pixie, Nightcrawler, and Storm as Bloodstorm. They captured the X-Men in their mansion and encased them in the volcanic spires of Rexagarth. Her plan was to call forth her sisters, versions of herself from other realities, so none had to be alone. In the end, though, the X-Men won and drove her back to Limbo yet again. In she's 35, we get a glimpse of magic with Goblin Queen in Limbo and fighting against the powered-up beast in the future. In 2019, Jonathan Hickman took over the X-Titles. This relaunch of sorts found the X-Men now all living on the island of Krakoa and now with the ability to resurrect mutants. She was holed up for a while in the basement of the Essex School for Foundlings with Sinister's Marauders team strung up upside down hanging from the roof while she 
performed occult rituals. She had Havoc captive as well, who had to cut his own mouth open with a shard of glass, and his anger got Goblin Queen to kiss him, excited as she was by his anger. She then had Arclight cut off her own hand and eat it to demonstrate her power. And then she went to her throne and revealed she was going to kill Havoc, then sent the enthralled marauders to destroy Krakoa. It ended up being Grey Crow who shot her in the chest and sent her right back to Limbo. In New Mutants, Pryor was on Krakoa and talked with Magic and asked her if she wanted a shot at getting everything she wanted. So Magic trained her to become the Queen of Hell. She went to Limbo to rule, taking the place of Ilyana Rasputin. It was here during the Dark Web event of early 2023 where Madeline teamed up with Chasm, aka Ben Riley, two clones with proverbial chips on their shoulders. They sought to unleash Pryor's demon hordes on New York City, but this changed and she opened a Limbo embassy in New York instead. When Ben and his love Janine Godby came to visit, she granted Janine powers and transformed Janine into Hallow's Eve. Janine had pushed Maddie off a cliff, stole her scythe, and gave it to Ben to temporarily become King of Limbo. She had to make a trade with the X-Men to end Limbo's New York invasion and stop Chasm. And when she got the staff back, Ben was imprisoned for his crimes. Hallow's Eve later met up with Ben at the Embassy's Brig, where Goblin Queen was also working on bureaucratic and administrative matters as Demon Ambassador. And Spider-Man ended up in her chamber when he was chasing demons who thought that they had diplomatic immunity. And then, in the wake of the Hellfire Gala and the Orcus attack that led to the fall of X, Jean Grey had to look into her past to find answers. And that's when we see the Phoenix Force jumping from mutant to mutant. Then Jean had an idea to channel it. The Goblin Queen. This led to a head-to-head -head with Jean and Batty as her mind was stuck in the past. In New York in the present, Alex was staying and sleeping with Maddie in the Limbo Embassy while the world started to revolt, targeting demons and targeting the Embassy, which had become a safe haven for all the mutants and freaks out there. She used a demonic version of Cerebro, her Mercy Crown, which was a hollow ivory skull to try to locate mutants displaced by the Hellfire Massacre. She set out with a dark X-Men team to help recover mutants before they were stuck in an Orcus re-education center. This team was her, Alex Summer Zero, Azazel, and Emplate. Alex was stabbed in the neck and died, though Maddie used her dark magic to revive him. And it turns out that Orcus had made their own Goblin Queen clone. This was a Maddie pulled from another reality that had devoted herself fully to corrupted magics and had sliced open Archangel for fun. Orcus used an elixir from Otherworld, the Blight's Will, and tested it on this corrupt queen to try to deactivate the X gene. Together, this X team fought back against the AU Maddie, Orcus, all while trying to save lost mutants trapped on Earth. This led her right into a head to head competition with her own clone, Goblin Queen vs. Goblin Queen. Pryor seems to have made a full circle story. A good mother and wife turned to Goblin Queen and now back to her chaotic good side. So for now, that's a wrap on this one, my friends. I'm Jesse. This is JLS Comics. Happy Halloween, and I'll see you soon.